Uh, hello, my name is Ober Petranovic, and I'll be talking about uh, how to make your own sounds using open source uh, libraries. So, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm currently a consultant in DevOps, but I've been a software developer for like the past 15 years, and I've been playing music ever since, so I'm trying to combine the two, the two biggest hobbies. Uh, I also tried to go professional in music, but uh, bigger bucks in IT. So, uh, the hero of the day will be Jack. Who here knows what the Jack is? Oh, that's cool. Uh, so, Jack is an audio uh, which basically kind of replaces Alsa for, uh, for, uh, for your audio card. And uh, but the biggest part uh, is it's a uh, audio routing application. It's like a virtual mixer. So uh, with Jack you can like connect. Uh, you can have multiple clients which like uh, correspond to modules in, in in music industry, and you can like connect them like you would do it with the, with the Jack with the cable. So um, Jack is a real time application, and it's a professional grade, so uh, it can work with latencies less than five milliseconds, and it's it's really good. Um, you can also use it. Uh, it also has an API which enables you to to manipulate the the stream, and that's sound. Here, uh, here you can see a uh, user interface for uh, for a Jack. So you you have a bunch of a bunch of clients, and they have a bunch of ports. It's like a mixer. It's just like a mixer. Uh, and you can connect whatever input you want to whatever output. And for example, you can connect your, you can connect your Spotify to go to uh, equalizer, and then to go to your speaker, while you're listening to YouTube on your headphones, and nobody knows you're listening to YouTube. So it's pretty cool. Um, let me show you how it works. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't think I have sound again. Well, we'll see. Um, basically, yeah, you just connect clients. Here we have a test. A test client test code that we wrote, that I wrote, and I'll show you how to do it. And it basically just copies input to output. It's really easy. And uh, the moment you connect these two dots, you're able to hear to hear sounds. Um, so, uh, what does real time uh, mean in this context? Well. Uh, uh, Jack is a real-time application, but it doesn't actually require a true real-time system to to, run, to be running. It only requires a real-time scheduler, and uh, stock Linux kernel has that option like since forever. So if you have a good hardware uh, that doesn't have interrupt requests messed up and handling of those uh, really weirdly set up, you will be just fine running the stock kernel. But if you want to go pro and have your own studio, you should probably compile your kernel with uh, preemptive RT patches um, if you want lower than five milliseconds latencies. Uh, digital recording is basically uh, it's just analog to digital transformation and, and vice versa. It's doing a pool suite modulation just like I know, modem, nothing fancy. But there is a couple of things that's like sound uh, specific. Um, so uh, sampling is done in a, in a, in a, in some frequency, which is a sample rate, and the uh, default sample rate is 40, 44,100, and that's usually used for home studios and home equipment. However, if you want, um, if you need to connect your professional equipment, they will probably work on only on 48 or even 96 kilohertz. Um, the difference is like, um, while our, our ear cannot hear the difference between 44, 100 and uh, 48, if you process the same data multiple times, uh, you'll be able to hear uh, degradation in data much quicker than on the 44, 100 and on 48 kilohertz. Uh, there's also a frame size and that's the biggest, uh, biggest parameter that you basically need to worry about. 
when you're setting up your jack. So uh, if you set up your frame, si uh, frame size low, you have uh, you have a better latency, but you have uh, much more instability in the system. What basically does uh, a frame size is basically a buffer size. So the slower the buffer size is, you're in decreasing the latency because the the data will be processed quicker. But uh, your PC will have to do more interrupt handling, more context switch and stuff like that. So it will probably result in X runs, which is basically buffer overruns, just in fancy, fancy jack terms. Um, and, since, and since this is a real-time system, uh, you will always get a response from kernel in desired latency. So if your jack says that the latency is 45 milliseconds, you will, al you will always get the response in 45 milliseconds, even if your audio processing Toolkit doesn't, uh, even if it can't produce result that fast, then you will get an X run, and that's uh, audible noise. You can hear like a click. It's, uh, so you really have to, uh, you, you need to have a decent system and configure it really good if you want to, if you want to use Jack uh, without these clicks. And also, there's a thing uh, about MIDI and analog. So. Uh, just a second. Uh, Jack. Oh, here it is. Uh, so yeah, Jack can transfer both analog and uh, digital data, and um, you can connect your MIDI connectors, and he will just pass through the data just as it's analog. So uh, here is an ex ex example. Here is my implementation of MIDI in, uh, of a MIDI client. So you basically just, you have a really slim specification online. MIDI is really simple. It has like, uh, it has like 10 commands, 30 controls, and like press key down, press key up, pitch, sustain, and volume. That's pretty much it. So you can really, in such a small class, you can implement most of the stuff you need uh, for MIDI to work. Uh, about analog, this is how you implement analog stuff in Jack. So you, instead of like sending commands, like click this uh, keyboard, uh, key on the keyboard, or do that on control panel, you're just basically copying data. You're just doing a mem, mem, mem CPI. Um, and now uh, yeah, I've heard that Google has some big, pretty big project that uh, is producing music uh, with AI with a huge artificial intelligence network. And um, uh, I believe that you can do the same only knowing uh, music theory. So I don't think that AI is the silver bullet. It's answer for everything. I think you can do the same only if you know uh, a little bit of music theory. And this project was an uh, attempt to prove it if I can do it in 30 days, which actually was five days because of life. But we'll see. We'll see how it sounds. We'll see how it sounds at the end. Um, so yeah, this was actually a mini project. If I can generate music procedurally in 30 days, and let's talk about how, what are the parts of like music? What is music, and how to generate? What what do we need to do to generate music uh, as as well? So first, we need to generate a sound. Uh, Sound is basically you press you press a keyboard and you get some sound. Um, you can uh, yeah, that's uh, we'll, we'll talk about it more later. But um, the harder part is the much harder part is like melody generation because uh, you need to you need to teach somehow a computer to have a feeling like what what sounds good and what doesn't. And to do that, you you need to know like uh, chord progression, harmony theory, uh, a lot of scales and stuff like that. So uh, I think that like some musical education would be like a prerequisite to do this stuff. Um, and then, if you think melody and harmony was hard, then you have a composition, which is like an extra level hard. So. Composition is basically, um, so while melody is basically picking up sounds for a single track. So 
uh, imagine you have a piano. Okay, we have a piano and now you just want to do some melody, just a couple of sequences of notes, that's a melody. Harmony is a progression of chords, so if, you, if you're only in one chord for all the time, you will be like bored. No matter what you do and how good you are and how melodic you are, people will just get bored. So it's, harmony is like how you move between the chords. And now you have a composition which is basically a combination of melody and harmony and their like, progression together. And then you have orchestration, which is basically you take this composition, this like a tune, let's call it, and then you have to make it um, a product. So you get like two bass players, you get three leads, you get string orchestra, you get backup vocals, then you need to write every single, you need to write on paper what every single of them do, and then you have to like orchestrate them and watch uh, their execution, and if they're doing everything fine. So, uh, yeah, it basically goes from, it goes from the easiest to the hardest. So, uh, sound, sound, uh, sound generation can basically be split in two, two parts, like uh, first is uh, synthesis, and, for, and uh, second is sampling. That's basically the only two, uh, only two approaches we have to generate sound. And, um, Synthesis, synthesis is basically creating it kind of electronically because sounds do, like, uh, they sound electronic, but uh, it's, basically, it's basically generating waves, like a sine waves or a square waves or stuff like that, and then manipulating them with filters to get precisely sound you, you, want, you want to have. And it's, uh, synthesis is quite cheaper than sampling because you, it's, it's, you have integrated secrets and you just use them and they're like really cheap, really fast, and, and it works. On the other hand, you have a sampling, and sampling is like, you basically record with a microphone or a set of microphones, you record like, imagine piano. Piano is one of the worst instruments to, to, uh, to generate sound. You basically, for piano, you basically take like set of four to five microphones and then you record every single key. And then you have, when you have every single key recorded, you have to replay those sounds, but in a way that when they are pressed together, uh, they need to sound like the piano, like on the piano you will press together. So it's much harder. You need to have much stronger CPUs on your devices. You need to have much more memory and stuff like that. Um, uh, Yes, and about, okay, we'll talk about it later. Um, so, uh, a little bit about sound theory. So, uh, the, difference be the difference between sound and noise is really important because you have sound in the melodic part and you have noise in rhythmic section, uh, more importantly, drums. So, uh, in music theory, sound is a repetitive pattern of, of sound waves. So it has to have a frequency, it has to have repetition. If, if it doesn't have a repetition, it's not, uh, it's not a sound, it's noise. So, uh, and that's like the basis of how to generate sound. Um, and now you have, uh, when you have just a sine wave, like uh, uh, um, of a typical frequency, it's just, uh, it just, uh, one, it's just like one sine wave, you know, just create like a constant, like a, a constant voice, but uh, in reality and in music, uh, sounds are almost always more complex, uh, meaning they have like more uh, timber inside of them. Timber is like like a color, I right, say it, like a, a, a variety of color. So um, for uh, complex sound, the interesting part about complex sound is that even though they are complex and they are like uh, when you see like the graphs and stuff and you can't find any pattern inside, every single sound, if you can hear it and if it's sound, you can break it down on a, on a, si on a combination of sine waves. So, um, and uh, that's what we are calling harmonics. So you're breaking complex sounds in a different harmonics. And if uh, a sound is simple, such as sine wave, that, then it only have one harmonic and that's its fundamental. Uh, harmonic on a fundamental frequency, um, which basically means, uh, well, that's the only, only thing you hear. But uh, as you start to, to amp up the, the sound, and adding effects and stuff like that, or different gen generators, you start to have uh, 
a lot more. Uh, you start to have a lot more, uh, a lot more um, stuff. So let me demonstrate. Uh, I don't think you can hear these guys. Just a second. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not that it would be nice if you can hear it, but it's not important. So this is noise, and this is the sign representation of noise. So as you can see, there's clearly no no pattern. It's like not pattern at all. It's just random, and it sounds like noise. And if you see on um, if you see how a complex sound looks, on the first it may seem like a noise, but there's clearly a pattern. Like. I don't know about you, but no matter how much I zoom, I can see a pattern. And uh, if the the cool thing is, if you do do a Fourier transform of that of that function, you're ba basically like sound is volume by time, uh, voltage. I'm sorry, voltage by time. So uh, if you do a Fourier transform on that, you'll actually get uh, a spectrum display, and it will look like. It will look like this. So, uh, <coughs> so uh, yeah, you have now um, you have a volume by the frequency, and here you can now see shown on the bottom of the screen, like here. Uh, oh wait, this needs to go away. Uh, you can see that we only have a fundamental frequency, but as we are opening pipes, this is like organ. Then we are adding more frequencies to to our sound. So that's the basics. Basically, that's the basic of of uh, that's the basics of uh, generating sound. Uh, and uh, keep in mind that this is additive synth because you are uh, you are adding. You have like eight pipes, and you are just adding them one to the other. But for example, a uh, much more popular uh, method of generating sound is re uh, reductive synth, which um, uh, which looks like this. Oh. So, uh, <coughs> oh, thanks. Uh, so um, you basically have a, g a generator. Uh, which creates some wave. It doesn't have to be sine. It can be square. It can be so. It can be uh, well, whatever you want. And then you, you, uh, and all the, all of those sine waves are really complex because, like a soul wave, really cre creates harmonics all over the place. So you actually need to uh, use filters and use effects to remove the parts you don't want. So instead of adding parts, uh, you're removing parts. It's much more cheaper and much more effective. That way. Um, so let's go back. Okay. Yep. They say if you use Windows, those those problems won't happen to you.
Yep. Okay, so if you wonder, this is how a, how a modern synthesizer looks inside. Like um, the uh, thing I saw you uh, before was a synthesizer, like when you bought it, like on the outside when you have controls. But if you're about to like put it apart, this is what you will end up with. So you have an oscillator which generates uh, which generates waves. You have envelopes which can modify uh, which can modify the sound like. Uh, as you press the key, uh, without the envelope, if you press the key, it will just uh, beep, like instantly. You can make it smooth, like it starts uh, quiet and then gets slower. There's the envelope. Then you can add a linear, uh, uh, like a mixer, and then you can combine multiple uh, voltages together. And then you can also apply filters like uh, cutoff filter, like high filter, low filter, uh, I mean high pass, low pass, and stuff like that. So you basically can generate a really complex and rich sound and then you can mute the part of it to to do, get uh, exactly what you want. Um, but now we have to move uh, to how to actually create music. And now it's like uh, uh, how to generate a melody, actually. So uh, a, mel uh, a melody generation is pretty simple. You actually just have to follow a scale. And uh, a scale is just like a, a subset of t from the 12 tones you, you can pick in an octave. And, um, and um, it's much harder to pick a scale according to your octave, uh, according to your chord progression, than to pick a, a melody. Pretty much you can just pick a random note and then just follow a couple of reductions, like uh, regulations, like you can do this, you can do this, and stuff like that. And you'll end up, you'll end up pretty good, especially if you keep in the higher voices because uh, the human ear is is sensitive to low uh, frequencies, and uh, that's why it's so, the bass player in the band is so important because uh, the lowest frequency you hear is the is basically defining the pitch and the chord of the whole of every other spectrum you hear. Uh, so if some if you do a mistake on a higher like pitch like a lead, where usually the melody is being played, it's not not a big deal. So you can really you can really be free in here. Um, this is this is how I implemented scales. It's like really simple. I just return like positions relative to the first to the first uh, part of the uh, to the root chord root note in the chord. But um, then we have harmony. And harmony is how we progress over chords. And here we're getting pretty interesting. So, uh, yeah, well, there are people like Bach who can like just, I don't know, sit on the piano and just, just do random shit and it will work really, really good. Uh, actually, uh, harmony is like a, a, it's like a really tough science in music theory. It's a filter respite. I don't know how to say it in, in English. So um, it's really hard. Um, but, but it doesn't have to be always that hard because you can just do like some popular stuff like using uh, uh, diatonic harmony, which Bach invented. And uh, I'm pretty sure you already heard that like 10 million times, for example. Um, uh, for example, these guys. Well, sound Recognize this? Yeah, yeah, that's Don't Stop Believing by Journey. And the cast of the Yeah, I don't yeah, know if you guys saw it, but uh, basically they're playing, they're playing for 20 minutes using the, four, the same four chords. So you just follow like, so if you just want to like do something that will be like good for average Joe, it's uh, this is uh, this is good enough. You can just follow this chord progression. Um, um, okay, we are here. 
So yeah, this is just my Harman implementation, really easy. I just define, <laughs> I just define the one four five policy, and I def I define the substitution codes. You can always capture substitution codes, like from a major to parallel minor, and that's all I did, and that was enough actually. But uh, since we are actually out of time, uh, I was about to talk a little bit about composition, but unfortunately I don't have any more time. Composition is just too hard to actually talk about in a 30 minute span. It just, it just doesn't, uh, yeah. I mean, my compositor implementation has 80, 1800 lines of code and it's just like, it's barely enough that you don't say it's like just plain ugly and sounds terrible. So uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to see, if you want to hear the results, it's not really good, but it's also not terrible. And I think, I think that's good enough. Let me just find it because my uh, LibreOffice doesn't love me today. Um, It's going crazy. It starts, it starts maybe decently, but then it does go crazy. Okay. I was about to stop it. I don't want to touch you guys. But uh, the funny part is how it actually sounded when I just started doing this. And it sounded like this at the start. can do I only had like five days to work on it and I think it, it's it's like it's not terrible and I think that's good uh, good stuff so uh, my final points would be like uh, I don't think you need to solve all the problems with AI and even if you do solve the problems with AI there are guys who will have a bigger data set and bigger bigger machines than you I th always think you can do it like I always think you can do it like uh, uh, with the uh, domain knowledge uh, or music theory in this way. I would also like to encourage you to do like more music stuff. I always see like shaders, I will see like graphic animations, gaming, 3D engines, but like I, I just don't know why people don't hack around with, uh, with, uh, with the music. It's really fun. And uh, yeah, it seems that popular music maybe doesn't suck as much as I, I thought it does because it's really hard to automate. And yeah, Jack is awesome. I hope you'll use it. So um, that's it. Thank you.